The Normans Norman, Normans, French, Normans are an ethnic group that arose in Normandy, a northern region of France, from contact between indigenous Franks and Gallo-Romans, and Norse Viking settlers. The settlements followed a series of raids on the French coast from Denmark, Norway, and Iceland, and they gained political legitimacy when the Viking leader Rollo agreed to swear fealty to King Charles III of West Francia. The distinct cultural and ethnic identity of the Normans emerged initially in the first half of the 10th century, and it continued to evolve over the succeeding centuries. The Norman dynasty had a major political, cultural, and military impact on medieval Europe and the Near East. The Normans were famed for their martial spirit and eventually for their Catholic piety, becoming exponents of the Catholic orthodoxy into which they assimilated. They adopted the Gallo-Romance language of the Frankish land they settled, their dialect becoming known as Norman, Normand or Norman French, an important literary language which is still spoken today in parts of Normandy and the nearby Channel Islands. The Duchy of Normandy, which they formed by treaty with the French crown, was a great fief of medieval France, and under Richard I of Normandy was forged into a cohesive and formidable principality in feudal tenure. The Normans are noted both for their culture, such as their unique Romanesque architecture and musical traditions, and for their significant military accomplishments and innovations. Norman adventurers played a role in founding the Kingdom of Sicily under Roger II after briefly conquering southern Italy and Malta from the Saracens and Byzantines, during an expedition on behalf of their duke, William the Conqueror, which also led to the Norman conquest of England at the historic Battle of Hastings in 1066. In the 9th century, the Normans captured Seville in southern Spain, and Norman and Anglo-Norman forces contributed to the Iberian Reconquista from the early 11th to the mid-13th centuries. Norman cultural and military influence spread from these new European centers to the Crusader states of the Near East, where their prince Bohemond I founded the Principality of Antioch in the Levant, to Scotland and Wales in Great Britain, to Ireland, and to the coasts of North Africa and the Canary Islands. The legacy of the Normans persists today through the regional languages and dialects of France, England, Spain, and Sicily, as well as the various cultural, judicial, and political arrangements they introduced in their conquered territories. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The English name, Normans, comes from the French words Normans, Normans, plural of Normand, modern French Normand, which is itself borrowed from Old Low Franconian Nortman, Northman, or directly from Old Norse Normar, Latinized variously as Nortmanus, Normanus, or Nordmanus recorded in medieval Latin, 9th century to mean, Norseman, Viking. The 11th century Benedictine monk and historian, Goffredo Malaterra, characterized the Normans thus, Specially marked by cunning, despising their own inheritance in the hope of winning a greater, eager after both gain and dominion, given to imitation of all kinds, holding a certain mean between lavishness and greediness, that is, perhaps uniting, as they certainly did, these two seemingly opposite qualities. Their chief men were specially lavish through their desire of good report. They were, moreover, a race skillful in flattery, given to the study of eloquence, so that the very boys were orators, a race altogether unbridled unless held firmly down by the yoke of justice. They were enduring of toil, hunger, and cold whenever fortune laid it on them, given to hunting and hawking, delighting in the pleasure of horses, and of all the weapons and garb of war. Topic. Settling of Normandy In the course of the 10th century, the initially destructive incursions of Norse war bands going upstream into the rivers of France penetrated further into interior Europe, and evolved into more permanent encampments that included local French women and personal property. The Duchy of Normandy, which began in 911 as a fiefdom, was established by the Treaty of Saint Clair sur Epte between King Charles III, Charles the Simple, 879 to 929, ruled 893 to 929 of West Francia and the famed Viking ruler Rollo, also known as Gange Rolf, c. 846 c. 929, from Scandinavia, and was situated in the former Frankish Kingdom of Neustria. The treaty offered Rollo and his men the French coastal lands along the English Channel between the river Epte and the Atlantic Ocean coast in exchange for their protection against further Viking incursions. As well as granting to protect the area of Rouen from Viking invasion, Rollo had to swear not to invade further Frankish lands himself, accept baptism and conversion to the Roman Catholic faith of Christianity becoming Christian and swear fealty to King Charles III. He became the first Duke of Normandy and Count of Rouen. 
The area corresponded to the northern part of present-day Upper Normandy down to the River Seine, but the duchy would eventually extend west beyond the Seine. The territory was roughly equivalent to the old province of Rouen, and reproduced the old Roman Empire's administrative structure of Gallia Lugdunensis II part of the former Gallia Lugdunensis in Gaul. Before Rollo's arrival, Normandy's populations did not differ from Picardy or the Ile de France, which were considered Frankish. Earlier Viking settlers had begun arriving in the 880s, but were divided between colonies in the east and Pays de Cox around the Low Seine Valley and in the west in the Cotentin Peninsula, and were separated by traditional Pagy, where the population remained about the same with almost no foreign settlers. Rollo's contingents from Scandinavia who raided and ultimately settled Normandy and parts of the European Atlantic coast included Danes, Norwegians, Norse Gaels, Orkney Vikings, possibly Swedes, and Anglo-Danes from the English Danelaw territory which earlier came under Norse control in the early 11th century. The descendants of Rollo's Vikings and their Frankish wives would replace the Norse religion and Old Norse language with Roman Catholicism Christianity and the Gallo-Romance language of the local people, descending from the Latin of the Romans, blending their maternal Frankish heritage with Old Norse traditions and customs to synthesize a unique Norman culture in the north of France. The Norman language was forged by the adoption of the indigenous Long de Oil branch of Romance by a Norse-speaking ruling class, and it developed into the French regional languages that survives today. The Normans thereafter adopted the growing feudal doctrines of the rest of France, and worked them into a functional hierarchical system in both Normandy and in Norman-dominated England. The new Norman rulers were culturally and ethnically distinct from the old French aristocracy, most of whom traced their lineage to the Franks of the Carolingian dynasty from the days of Charlemagne in the 9th century. Most Norman knights remained poor and land-hungry, and by the time of the expedition and invasion of England in 1066, Normandy had been exporting fighting horsemen for more than a generation. Many Normans of Italy, France and England eventually served as avid crusaders soldiers under the Italo-Norman prince Bohemond I of Antioch and the Anglo-Norman king Richard the Lionheart, one of the more famous and illustrious kings of England. Topic: <laughs> Conquests and military offensives. Topic: <laughs> Italy Opportunistic bands of Normans successfully established a foothold in southern Italy. Probably as the result of returning pilgrim stories, the Normans entered southern Italy as warriors in 1017 at the latest. In 999, according to Amadis of Monte Cassino, Norman pilgrims returning from Jerusalem called in at the port of Salerno when a Saracen attack occurred. The Normans fought so valiantly that Prince Guimar III begged them to stay, but they refused and instead offered to tell others back home of the prince's request. William of Apulia tells that, in 1016, Norman pilgrims to the shrine of the Archangel Michael at Monte Gargano were met by Melis of Bari, a Lombard nobleman and rebel, who persuaded them to return with more warriors to help throw off the Byzantine rule, which they did. The two most prominent Norman families to arrive in the Mediterranean were descendants of Tancred of Hauteville and the Drango family. A group of Normans with at least five brothers from the Drango family fought the Byzantines in Apulia under the command of Melo di Bari. Between 1016 and 1024, in a fragmented political context, the county of Ariano was founded by another group of Norman knights headed by Gilbert Buatire and hired by Melo di Bari. Defeated at Cannes, Melo di Bari escaped to Bamberg, Germany, where he died in 1022. The county, which replaced the pre-existing chamberlainship, was considered to be the first political body established by the Normans in the south of Italy. Then Rainulf Drango, from the same family, received the county of Aversa from Duke Sergius IV of Naples in 1030. The Hauteville family achieved princely rank by proclaiming Prince Guimar IV of Salerno, Duke of Apulia and Calabria. He promptly awarded their elected leader, William Iron Arm, with the title of Count in his capital of Melfi. The Drango family thereafter attained the Principality of Capua, and Emperor Henry III legally ennobled the Hauteville leader, Drogo, as Dux et Magister Italiae Comesque Normanorum Totius Apuliae et Calabriae, Duke and Master of Italy and Count of the Normans of all Apulia and Calabria. In 1047, from these bases, the Normans eventually captured Sicily and Malta from the Saracens, under the leadership of the famous Robert Giscard, a Hauteville, and his younger brother Roger the Great Count. 
Roger's son, Roger II of Sicily, was crowned king in 1130 exactly one century after Rainulf was «crowned» count by antipope Anacletus II. The Kingdom of Sicily lasted until 1194, when it was transferred to the House of Hohenstaufen through marriage. The Normans left their legacy in many castles, such as William Iron Arms Citadel at Squillis, and cathedrals, such as Roger II's Capella Palatina at Palermo, which dot the landscape and give a distinct architectural flavor to accompany its unique history. Institutionally, the Normans combined the administrative machinery of the Byzantines, Arabs, and Lombards with their own conceptions of feudal law in order to forge a unique government. Under this state, there was great religious freedom, and alongside the Norman nobles existed a meritocratic bureaucracy of Jews, Muslims and Christians, both Catholic and Eastern Orthodox. The Kingdom of Sicily thus became characterized by Norman, Byzantine, Greek, Arab, Lombard and native. Sicilian populations living in harmony, and its Norman rulers fostered plans of establishing an empire that would have encompassed Fatimid Egypt as well as the Crusader states in the Levant. One of the great geographical treatises of the Middle Ages, the Tabula Rogeriana, was written by the Andalusian al Adrisi for King Roger II of Sicily, and entitled, Kitab Rujger, the Book of Roger. <laughs> Byzantium Soon after the Normans began to enter Italy, they entered the Byzantine Empire and then Armenia, fighting against the Pechenegs, the Bulgars, and especially the Seljuk Turks. Norman mercenaries were first encouraged to come to the south by the Lombards to act against the Byzantines, but they soon fought in Byzantine service in Sicily. They were prominent alongside Varangian and Lombard contingents in the Sicilian campaign of George Maniaches in 1038–40. There is debate whether the Normans in Greek service actually were from Norman Italy, and it now seems likely only a few came from there. It is also unknown how many of the Franks, as the Byzantines called them, were Normans and not other Frenchmen. One of the first Norman mercenaries to serve as a Byzantine general was Hervé in the 1050s. By then, however, there were already Norman mercenaries serving as far away as Trebizond and Georgia. They were based at Malatya and Edessa, under the Byzantine Duke of Antioch, Isaac Komnenos. In the 1060s, Robert Crispin led the Normans of Edessa against the Turks. Roussel de Bailoul even tried to carve out an independent state in Asia Minor with support from the local population, but he was stopped by the Byzantine general Alexius Komnenos. Some Normans joined Turkish forces to aid in the destruction of the Armenian vassal states of Sassoon and Taran in far eastern Anatolia. Later, many took up service with the Armenian state further south in Cilicia and the Taurus Mountains. A Norman named Aurcel led a force of Franks into the upper Euphrates Valley in northern Syria. From 1073 to 1074, 8,000 of the 20,000 troops of the Armenian general Philaretus Brachemius were Normans formerly of Aurcel led by Rainbowed. They even lent their ethnicity to the name of their castle, Afrangi, meaning Franks. The known trade between Amalfi and Antioch and between Bari and Tarsus may be related to the presence of Italo-Normans in those cities while Amalfi and Bari were under Norman rule in Italy. Several families of Byzantine Greece were of Norman mercenary origin during the period of the Komnenian Restoration, when Byzantine emperors were seeking out Western European warriors. The Raouli were descended from an Italo-Norman named Raoul, the Petrelefi were descended from a Pierre d'Alpes, and that group of Albanian clans known as the Maniacates were descended from Normans who served under George Maniaches in the Sicilian expedition of 1038. Robert Giscard, another Norman adventurer previously elevated to the dignity of Count of Apulia as the result of his military successes, ultimately drove the Byzantines out of southern Italy. Having obtained the consent of Pope Gregory VII and acting as his vassal, Robert continued his campaign conquering the Balkan Peninsula as a foothold for Western feudal lords and the Catholic Church. After allying himself with Croatia and the Catholic cities of Dalmatia, in 1081 he led an army of 30,000 men in 300 ships landing on the southern shores of Albania, capturing Valona, Canina, Jericho Orikumi, and reaching Butrint after numerous pillages. They joined the fleet that had previously conquered Corfu and attacked Dyrrhachium from land and sea, devastating everything along the way. Under these harsh circumstances, the locals accepted the call of Emperor Alexius I Komnenus to join forces with the Byzantines against the Normans. 
The Albanian forces could not take part in the ensuing battle because it had started before their arrival. Immediately before the battle, the Venetian fleet had secured a victory in the coast surrounding the city. Forced to retreat, Alexius ceded the city of Dyrrhachium to the Count of the Tent or Byzantine provincial administrators mobilizing from Arbanan i.e., ex Arbanan Hormomeno Comiscorte The term Comiscorte is short for Combs Tays Courts meaning, Count of the Tent. The city's garrison resisted until February 1082, when Dyrrhachium was betrayed to the Normans by the Venetian and Amalfitan merchants who had settled there. The Normans were now free to penetrate into the hinterland, they took Yanina and some minor cities in southwestern Macedonia and Thessaly before appearing at the gates of Thessalonica. Dissension among the high ranks coerced the Normans to retreat to Italy. They lost Dyrrhachium, Valona, and Butrant in 1085, after the death of Robert. A few years after the First Crusade, in 1107, the Normans under the command of Bohemond, Robert's son, landed in Valona and besieged Dyrrhachium using the most sophisticated military equipment of the time, but to no avail. Meanwhile, they occupied Petrella, the citadel of Mili at the banks of the river Debolus, Gyavenica, Balsh, Canina and Jericho. This time, the Albanians sided with the Normans, dissatisfied by the heavy taxes the Byzantines had imposed upon them. With their help, the Normans secured the Arbanan passes and opened their way to Debra. The lack of supplies, disease and Byzantine resistance forced Bohemond to retreat from his campaign and sign a peace treaty with the Byzantines in the city of Debolus. The further decline of Byzantine state of affairs paved the road to a third attack in 1185, when a large Norman army invaded Dyrrhachium, owing to the betrayal of high Byzantine officials. Some time later, Dyrrhachium, one of the most important naval bases of the Adriatic, fell again to Byzantine hands. Topic: <inaudible> England. The Normans were in contact with England from an early date. Not only were their original Viking brethren still ravaging the English coasts, they occupied most of the important ports opposite England across the English Channel. This relationship eventually produced closer ties of blood through the marriage of Emma, sister of Duke Richard II of Normandy, and King Ethelred II of England. Because of this, Ethelred fled to Normandy in 1013, when he was forced from his kingdom by Swain Forkbeard. His stay in Normandy until 1016 influenced him and his sons by Emma, who stayed in Normandy after Canute the Great's conquest of the Isle. When Edward the Confessor finally returned from his father's refuge in 1041, at the invitation of his half-brother Harthacanute, he brought with him a Norman-educated mind. He also brought many Norman counsellors and fighters, some of whom established an English cavalry force. This concept never really took root, but it is a typical example of Edward's attitude. He appointed Robert of Jumiges Archbishop of Canterbury and made Ralph the timid Earl of Hereford. He invited his brother-in-law Eustace II, Count of Boulogne to his court in 1051, an event that resulted in the greatest of early conflicts between Saxon and Norman and ultimately resulted in the exile of Earl Godwin of Wessex. On 14 October 1066, William the Conqueror gained a decisive victory at the Battle of Hastings, which led to the conquest of England three years later, this can be seen on the Bayou Tapestry a linen, embroidered cloth. The invading Normans and their descendants replaced the Anglo-Saxons as the ruling class of England. The nobility of England were part of a single Norman culture and many had lands on both sides of the Channel. Early Norman kings of England, as Dukes of Normandy, owed homage to the King of France for their land on the continent. They considered England to be their most important holding it brought with it the title of king—an important status symbol. Eventually, the Normans merged with the natives, combining languages and traditions, so much so that Marjorie Chibnall says, "...writers still referred to Normans and English, but the terms no longer meant the same as in the immediate aftermath of 1066." In the course of the Hundred Years' War, the Norman aristocracy often identified themselves as English. The Anglo-Norman language became distinct from the Latin language, something that was the subject of some humor by Geoffrey Chaucer. The Anglo-Norman language was eventually absorbed into the Anglo-Saxon language of their subjects see Old English and influenced it, helping along with the Norse language of the earlier Anglo-Norse settlers and the Latin used by the Church in the development of Middle English. It in turn evolved into Modern English. <laughs> Ireland 
The Normans had a profound effect on Irish culture and history after their invasion at Banno Bay in 1169. Initially, the Normans maintained a distinct culture and ethnicity. Yet, with time, they came to be subsumed into Irish culture to the point that it has been said that they became more Irish than the Irish themselves. The Normans settled mostly in an area in the east of Ireland, later known as the Pale, and also built many fine castles and settlements, including Trim Castle and Dublin Castle. Both cultures intermixed, borrowing from each other's language, culture and outlook. Norman descendants today can be recognized by their surnames. Names such as French, de Roche, Devereux, Darcy, Tracy and Lacey are particularly common in the southeast of Ireland, especially in the southern part of County Wexford, where the first Norman settlements were established. Other Norman names, such as Furlong, predominate there. Another common Norman Irish name was Morel, Morel derived from the French Norman name Morel. Names beginning with Fitz from the Norman for son indicate Norman ancestry. These included Fitzgerald, Fitzgibbons, Gibbons dynasty, Fitzmorris. Families bearing such surnames as Barry de Barra and de Burka Burke are also of Norman extraction. Topic: <laughs> Scotland. One of the claimants of the English throne opposing William the Conqueror, Edgar Atheling, eventually fled to Scotland. King Malcolm III of Scotland married Edgar's sister Margaret, and came into opposition to William who had already disputed Scotland's southern borders. William invaded Scotland in 1072, riding as far as Abernethy where he met up with his fleet of ships. Malcolm submitted, paid homage to William and surrendered his son Duncan as a hostage, beginning a series of arguments as to whether the Scottish crown owed allegiance to the King of England. Normans went into Scotland, building castles and founding noble families that would provide some future kings, such as Robert the Bruce, as well as founding a considerable number of the Scottish clans. King David I of Scotland, whose elder brother Alexander I had married Sibylla of Normandy, was instrumental in introducing Normans and Norman culture to Scotland, part of the process some scholars call the Davidian Revolution. Having spent time at the court of Henry I of England married to David's sister Maud of Scotland, and needing them to wrestle the kingdom from his half-brother Ma'el Kaluim Mac Alexander, David had to reward many with lands. The process was continued under David's successors, most intensely of all under William the Lion. The Norman-derived feudal system was applied in varying degrees to most of Scotland. Scottish families of the names Bruce, Gray, Ramsay, Fraser, Rose, Ogilvy, Montgomery, Sinclair, Pollock, Bernard, Douglas and Gordon to name but a few, and including the later royal house of Stuart, can all be traced back to Norman ancestry. Topic. Wales Even before the Norman conquest of England, the Normans had come into contact with Wales. Edward the Confessor had set up the aforementioned Ralph as Earl of Hereford and charged him with defending the marches and warring with the Welsh. In these original ventures, the Normans failed to make any headway into Wales. Subsequent to the conquest, however, the marches came completely under the dominance of William's most trusted Norman barons, including Bernard de Neufmarche, Roger of Montgomery in Shropshire, and Hugh Lupus in Cheshire. These Normans began a long period of slow conquest during which almost all of Wales was at some point subject to Norman interference. Norman words, such as baron barn, first entered Welsh at that time. Topic. On crusade The legendary religious zeal of the Normans was exercised in religious wars long before the First Crusade carved out a Norman principality in Antioch. They were major foreign participants in the Reconquista in Iberia. In 1018, Roger de Tosny travelled to the Iberian Peninsula to carve out a state for himself from Moorish lands, but failed. In 1064, during the War of Barbastro, William of Montreuil led the papal army and took a huge booty. In 1096, crusaders passing by the siege of Amalfi were joined by Bohemond of Taranto and his nephew Tancred with an army of Italo-Normans. Bohemond was the de facto leader of the crusade during its passage through Asia Minor. After the successful siege of Antioch in 1097, Bohemond began carving out an independent principality around that city. Tancred was instrumental in the conquest of Jerusalem and he worked for the expansion of the crusader kingdom in Transjordan and the region of Galilee. <laughs> Anglo-Norman conquest of Cyprus 
The conquest of Cyprus by the Anglo-Norman forces of the Third Crusade opened a new chapter in the history of the island, which would be under Western European domination for the following 380 years. Although not part of a planned operation, the conquest had much more permanent results than initially expected. In April 1191, Richard the Lion-Hearted left Messina with a large fleet in order to reach Acre. But a storm dispersed the fleet. After some searching, it was discovered that the boat carrying his sister and his fiancée Berengaria was anchored on the south coast of Cyprus, together with the wrecks of several other ships, including the treasure ship. Survivors of the wrecks had been taken prisoner by the island's despot Isaac Komnenos. On 1 May 1191, Richard's fleet arrived in the port of Limassol on Cyprus. He ordered Isaac to release the prisoners and the treasure. Isaac refused, so Richard landed his troops and took Limassol. Various princes of the Holy Land arrived in Limassol at the same time, in particular Guy de Lusignan. All declared their support for Richard provided that he support Guy against his rival Conrad of Montferrat. The local barons abandoned Isaac, who considered making peace with Richard, joining him on the crusade, and offering his daughter in marriage to the person named by Richard. But Isaac changed his mind and tried to escape. Richard then proceeded to conquer the whole island, his troops being led by Guy de Lusignan. Isaac surrendered and was confined with silver chains, because Richard had promised that he would not place him in irons. By the 1st of June, Richard had conquered the whole island. His exploit was well publicized and contributed to his reputation. He also derived significant financial gains from the conquest of the island. Richard left for Acre on the 5th of June with his allies. Before his departure, he named two of his Norman generals, Richard de Campbell and Robert de Thornham, as governors of Cyprus. While in Limassol, Richard the Lionheart married Berengaria of Navarre, first-born daughter of King Sancho VI of Navarre. The wedding was held on 12 May 1191 at the Chapel of St. George and it was attended by Richard's sister Joan, whom he had brought from Sicily. The marriage was celebrated with great pomp and splendor. Among other grand ceremonies was a double coronation, Richard caused himself to be crowned King of Cyprus, and Berengaria Queen of England and Queen of Cyprus as well. The rapid Anglo-Norman conquest proved more important than it seemed. The island occupied a key strategic position on the maritime lanes to the Holy Land, whose occupation by the Christians could not continue without support from the sea. Shortly after the conquest, Cyprus was sold to the Knights Templar and it was subsequently acquired, in 1192, by Guy de Lusignan and became a stable feudal kingdom. It was only in 1489 that the Venetians acquired full control of the island, which remained a Christian stronghold until the fall of Famagusta in 1571. Topic. Canary Islands Between 1402 and 1405, the expedition led by the Norman noble Jean de Bethencourt and the Poitevin Gadifer de la Salle conquered the Canarian islands of Lanzarote, Fuerteventura and El Hierro off the Atlantic coast of Africa. Their troops were gathered in Normandy, Gascony and were later reinforced by Castilian colonists. Bethencourt took the title of King of the Canary Islands, as vassal to Henry III of Castile. In 1418, Jean's nephew Maco de Bethencourt sold the rights to the islands to Enrique Pérez de Guzmán, second Count de Niebla. Culture Norman law The customary law of Normandy was developed between the 10th and 13th centuries and survives today through the legal systems of Jersey and Guernsey in the Channel Islands. Norman customary law was transcribed in two customaries in Latin by two judges for use by them and their colleagues. These are the Trace Ancient Couchmier, very ancient customary, authored between 1200 and 1245, and the Grand Couchmier de Normandy, Great Customary of Normandy, originally Summa de Legibus Normandie in Curia Laicale, authored between 1235 and 1245. Topic: <laughs> Architecture. Norman architecture typically stands out as a new stage in the architectural history of the regions they subdued. They spread a unique Romanesque idiom to England, Italy and Ireland, and the encastellation of these regions with keeps in their North French style fundamentally altered the military landscape. Their style was characterized by rounded arches, particularly over windows and doorways, and massive proportions. 
In England, the period of Norman architecture immediately succeeds that of the Anglo-Saxon and precedes the early Gothic. In southern Italy, the Normans incorporated elements of Islamic, Lombard, and Byzantine building techniques into their own, initiating a unique style known as Norman Arab architecture within the Kingdom of Sicily. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Visual Arts. In the visual arts, the Normans did not have the rich and distinctive traditions of the cultures they conquered. However, in the early 11th century the dukes began a program of church reform, encouraging the Cluniac reform of monasteries and patronizing intellectual pursuits, especially the proliferation of scriptoria and the reconstitution of a compilation of lost illuminated manuscripts. The church was utilized by the dukes as a unifying force for their disparate duchy. The chief monasteries taking part in this renaissance of Norman art and scholarship were Mont Saint-Michel, Faycamp, Jumiges, Beck, saint Ouen, saint Everul, and saint Wandrel. These centers were in contact with the so-called Winchester School, which channeled a pure Carolingian artistic tradition to Normandy. In the final decade of the 11th and first of the 12th century, Normandy experienced a golden age of illustrated manuscripts, but it was brief and the major scriptoria of Normandy ceased to function after the midpoint of the century. The French wars of religion in the 16th century and the French Revolution in the 18th successively destroyed much of what existed in the way of the architectural and artistic remnant of this Norman creativity. The former, with their violence, caused the wanton destruction of many Norman edifices, the latter, with its assault on religion, caused the purposeful destruction of religious objects of any type, and its destabilization of society resulted in rampant pillaging. By far the most famous work of Norman art is the Bayeux Tapestry, which is not a tapestry but a work of embroidery. It was commissioned by Odo, the Bishop of Bayeux and first Earl of Kent, employing natives from Kent who were learned in the Nordic traditions imported in the previous half-century by the Danish Vikings. In Britain, Norman art primarily survives as stonework or metalwork, such as capitals and baptismal fonts. In southern Italy, however, Norman artwork survives plentifully in forms strongly influenced by its Greek, Lombard, and Arab forebears. Of the royal regalia preserved in Palermo, the crown is Byzantine in style and the coronation cloak is of Arab craftsmanship with Arabic inscriptions. Many churches preserve sculptured fonts, capitals, and more importantly mosaics, which were common in Norman Italy and drew heavily on the Greek heritage. Lombard Salerno was a centre of ivorywork in the 11th century and this continued under Norman domination. The intercourse between French crusaders travelling to the Holy Land who brought with them French artefacts with which to gift the churches at which they stopped in southern Italy amongst their Norman cousins. For this reason many South Italian churches preserve works from France alongside their native pieces. Topic. Music. Normandy was the site of several important developments in the history of classical music in the 11th century. Faycamp Abbey and St. Everul Abbey were centers of musical production and education. At Faycamp, under two Italian abbots, William of Volpiano and John of Ravenna, the system of denoting notes by letters was developed and taught. It is still the most common form of pitch representation in English and German-speaking countries today. Also at Faycamp, the staff, around which neumes were oriented, was first developed and taught in the 11th century. Under the German abbot Isambard, La Trinité du Mont became a centre of musical composition. At St. Evrul, a tradition of singing had developed and the choir achieved fame in Normandy. Under the Norman abbot Robert de Grantmesnel, several monks of St. Evrul fled to southern Italy, where they were patronised by Robert Giscard and established a Latin monastery at Santufemia. There they continued the tradition of singing. Topic. Rulers List of Dukes of Normandy List of Counts and Dukes of Apulia and Calabria List of Counts of Aversa List of Princes of Capua List of Dukes of Gita List of Princes of Taranto List of Monarchs of Sicily List of Princes of Antioch List of Officers of the Principality of Antioch Second House of Lusignan List of English Monarchs List of Scottish Monarchs Topic. See also 
Norman language Kingdom of Africa – Italo-Norman garrisons in northern Africa in the 12th century Norsemen Rus people References Sources Further reading Bates, David The Normans and Empire. Oxford, UK, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-967441-1. Chibnall, Marjorie 2000. The Normans. Oxford, Blackwell Publishing. ISBN 978-1-4051-4965-5. Rowley, Trevor, ed. 2000. The Normans. The History Press. <laughs> External links Editors of Encyclopædia Britannica, Norman People, Encyclopædia Britannica Online X1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link. Jones, K. 1066, The Impact and Legacy of the Norman Invasion of England, History in an Hour. Hudson, John, Normans, BBC. Salerno, V. Sicilian Peoples, The Normans, Best of Sicily Magazine. Kelly, Patrick, The Normans, Their History, Arms and Tactics. Who were the Normans? Regia Anglorum Of St. Quentin, Dudo, Gesta Normanorum, The Orb, English translation. Breve Chronicon Northmanicum in Latin, Storia Online. The Normans PDF, Jersey Heritage Trust, archived from the original PDF on 26 March 2009. The Normans in Italy in Italian, Mondastoria.